Hi and welcome to the Viewfinders Photography Podcast. I'm your host, Graham Dargy, and today my guest is Shona Perkins, a landscape photographer based in Edinburgh, Scotland, whose minimal style creates images that will definitely chill your vibes. And that's something we could all do with one year into the pandemic. I'll introduce Shona in a minute, but first, uh, let me take a moment to mention Viewfinders Live, an evening with Jim Richardson, coming up on Monday the 29th of March 2021 on Zoom. This is a rare opportunity to get up close with one of America's most respected photographers. Jim, who's shot over 50 stories for National Geographic, will share a presentation focusing on his obsession with Scotland. You can ask him anything in the live Q&A, and you could even win a £50 MPV voucher in the exclusive prize draw. Jim is a true master of his craft, with decades of experience shooting at the very highest level, but he brings his knowledge to bear in such a down-to-earth and relatable manner. So if you're an experienced photographer, or if you're just getting started, you'll take lots away from this session. Tickets are available at Eventbrite for just £10 plus booking fee. That's 11 37 in total. Don't worry if you can't make it on the night. A recording of the session will be made available for ticket holders for seven days after the event. This is going to be such a fun, interesting and educational night, and I hope I can see you there. Thanks to MPB for sponsoring this event. MPB is a place where you can buy, sell and trade used photography kit. If you've got a camera, lens or flash lingering in your bag that you're not using, why not trade it to MPB for something you will use? MPB trades thousands of items every week and each item comes with a six month warranty. I'd love to connect with you and you can find me on Instagram at Viewfinders Podcast. Also check out view-finders.co.uk where you can find out more about what I do and hear more episodes of the show. Okay, on to this week's guest. Shona Perkins is a photographer based in Edinburgh whose minimal compositions and use of ICM, intentional camera movement, helps her create landscape and seascape images with a wonderful sense of calm and tranquility. When redundancy interrupted her high-pressure career, Shona turned to landscape photography as a way to reconnect with herself and has since gained a 7,000 strong following on Instagram. Shona's work has also caught the attention of the ICM photography community and she'll be featured in the March issue of ICM Photography Magazine. Not bad for someone who only got serious about photography a few years ago. Our conversation touches on finding minimal compositions, ICM camera craft, landscapes, seascapes, shooting locally and exploring Scotland's wonderful Outer Hebrides and much more. Hope you enjoy this. Here's my conversation with Shona Perkins. Hi Shona, welcome to the podcast. How's things? Yeah, good. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. I really love talking to different photographers from around the world. It's my favorite thing that the podcast has brought me, but um, I always want to keep a space, I think, for a Scottish landscape photographer every (laughs) now and again, because um, I just think we're so fortunate to have what we have on our doorstep. Well, yeah. Yeah. And I was doing this event with Mark McCall the other week and We know about Scotland, obviously, because we live here, but um, in the presentation, he just the amount of shots he showed from Scotland and the range of locations and seeing it all together in that presentation in a a short time. I was I was mind blown, really. I thought, really, we do have an amazing place that we're in the in the midst of here. So um, I'm, I'm really always happy to make a space for a landscape photographer from Scotland because I think we have a lot to talk about. So before we get into it, um, how about you introduce yourself and tell me a bit about your photography? Oof, um, where do I begin? My first camera would have been a Kodak throwaway camera um, back in the late 80s. Um, mm-hmm. And I've had a camera in hand all my life, really. But to be honest, it's always been a point and shoot Um, never really took it more seriously than snapping away, holiday snaps, family snaps. Um, And it wasn't really until three years ago now that I actually invested in my first DSLR and enrolled in uh, the British Academy of Photography and decided, right, okay, I actually want to take this a bit further, learn about the technical side of photography, understand what you can do with photography um, and take it from there. So that kind of happened by accident, really. I I was, you know, in a very senior career in regional management that sort of came to an abrupt end in at the end of 2017, it was, where I was made redundant after sort of 18 years service and uh, hit me hard. Um, I think I'd been working at such a pace for such a long time that you know you know when you stop 
and everything ju- you just realize oh my god I'm absolutely knackered um and I did just hit a wall mm. I can only be honest I I really was absolutely knackered I didn't know what I was going to do um and it was that break that I picked up the camera and decided right I'm going to do something with this and that's when I started my beautiful Scotland's Instagram account um and I've mm-hmm. thoroughly enjoyed that. It was, I was, I suppose, really, I was quite lucky in the respect that I sort of had a couple of years out and took that time to sort of travel Scotland. So mm-hmm. um, my husband came in tow and we literally traveled, you know, all the photography hotspots yeah. um, and took that time to really, really explore and practice and take as many shots as I could and experiment with different styles and you know really really understand what you can do mm-hmm. and just fell in love with photography fell more in love with Scotland than I already was because mm-hmm. as you've said earlier it's the most beautiful country and we're mm-hmm. really really lucky to live here yeah so that, that has a lot to pick up on there let me go uh, deep straight away I was wondering if um when you had the redundancy mm. if you're working hard and that's you that's who you are to an extent is your profession if you in that process of hitting the wall as you said was there did you feel like a, a who am I anymore like a loss of identity kind of thing uh, uh, yeah I mean I mean, I was lucky that in my my career lasted so long. And, you know, I mean, lots of people, especially now through the pandemic, are going through redundancies. And I've only had that once in my life. Um, And my heart goes out to everybody going through that at the moment because it's the hardest thing. It's been the hardest thing that I've ever had to go through in my life. Um, And I loved my job. It's it's all I knew. You know, I, I was I worked hard. I worked 60 odd hours a week. I traveled all over Scotland and Northern Ireland in my job. And I had amazing relationships with my team. So, yeah, to have that taken away, um, I mean, no redundancy, you know, you don't normally see a redundancy coming um Mm. so yeah it was a shock and um yeah it was a really really difficult time and without sounding completely cliche photography got me through that um you know and having that you know when you're out in the landscape when you're out seeing the beautiful places that we get to see in the most beautiful conditions you know it takes your breath away it it, it makes you step back it makes you just stop and really really appreciate um so i i did some over the course of a couple of years, having that time out really allowed me to sort of find out what what do I want to do in this next stage of my life? Do I want to go back into that sort of fast paced, you know, 60 hour week work working lifestyle or do I want to do something different? Um, so, you know, that that's I, I've taken a step back in my career now and mm-hmm. actually have taken a drop in hours to allow myself, you know, that work-life balance, which is now so, so, so important to me. You know, what I like about your photography that really caught me about it was the sense of sort of tranquility about it and calmness. And um, it's very relaxing to view your photography and you have such a gentle touch with the shooting and the processing. And um, I, did you find that calmness uh, did that help you find a sort of calmness and peace through that difficult time in your life then? Yes. Um, yeah, a hun- yeah, 100 percent. I mean, when you're out taking photographs, I mean, you know, my favorite time to shoot is sunrise. Um, I, I absolutely love a sunrise. And I'm not going to lie, I absolutely hate getting up at 4 a.m. Mm-hmm. Um, th- there is nothing nice about that. But uh, <laughs> once you're up and once you're out um, and you barely see anybody, um it's just, it, 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 you know, the world's sleeping and there you are out looking at, you know, watching the sunrise and another day begin. Uh, and, you know, there's no better feeling. There is no better feeling. And uh, especially when you, you witness something really, really special. And I've been lucky enough to see some incredible sunrises. Um, and yeah, it does bring that sense of calm. So I definitely want to try and portray that in the images that I create. Mm-hmm. With the um, pandemic and the lockdowns that we've had, mm. Um, obviously we haven't been able to go too far around no. the amazing country that we have to explore so have you been finding uh, ways to explore locally yeah I think I, I think yeah it's certainly I know my area in Edinburgh much much better um, it's also made me appreciate um, 
where I live and I, I know how lucky I am to live. Oh, Edinburgh is great, a great position. You know, you've got the Pentland Hills on one side and then you've got obviously the coast on the other. I mean, I'm, I'm, I can see the sea from where I live. I'm very lucky in that respect. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you've got the, mo- the most amazing sort of if you're into sort of city photography, you've got the most amazing city on your doorstep mm-hmm. as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm very lucky in that respect. I do miss obviously traveling to uh, you know, the West Coast beaches are that there, there's nothing else like those in the world. So I do miss that. Um, but yeah, Portobello Beach has been my absolute go to. And if you look at my my latest shots, they're all Portobello. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the beauty with seascape photography is, you know, you, you're you always going to get something different. Uh, it's a really nice spot, Portobello. I'd, yeah. um, we go to Edinburgh frequently, probably usually a couple of times a year at least, uh-huh. just for a day or two or whatever. And, um, but there are local spot, um, we live in Aberdeen and not far from Aberdeen is a place called Stonehaven. Yeah. And, beautiful. Uh, it's near Donotter Castle. I think maybe yeah. you've been there, but, um, it's, it is beautiful, but I always felt like, uh, Portobello was a bit like the Stonehaven of Edinburgh where it's uh-huh, just kind of yeah. adjacent and it's, it's not like it in, in some ways. No, we miss the cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I haven't got the beautiful cliffs that you have up in Stonehaven and Aberdeen. Yeah, but it's nice to have that close by getaway and it's definitely got good vibes in, in Portobello. Yeah. So you can easily get out there quite frequently and, and get yeah. on with some photography. It's a great sunset, sunrise location too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like I, I was saying, your style, it, it's really um, unfussy and I, I always thought the compositions are very clean and there's not too many elements uh, in the photographs. Mm. Um, is that a way of seeing that is just the way that you see or is that something you strive to do to kind of minimize and, and keep things I do simple? I do like a minimalist shot I don't I it, it, I mean it comes back to my own sort of style at home at my interiors mm-hmm. um I love art um uh, I do a little bit of art myself um and, but all of the art that I would have at home would be of a very sort of minimalist, all sort of seascapes, mm-hmm. largely Scottish. Um, so it, it's very much a style that I personally love. Yes. And so do you, are you purposely looking to exclude things or I don't know if, if, if I'm getting uh, to what my thought is about um, how hard you have to work to make it simple or does it just come to you that way? I think because the the locations that I particularly love, which is seascapes and beaches, then yeah. naturally that sort of lends itself to sort of big expanses of, you know, sand untouched, um, you know. So I, I think what I like to shoot lends itself into that more sort of minimalistic frame anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if I was doing a busier composition, I certainly would try and still try and create that that sense of minimal um calm and so are you able to go to a location with a specific image in mind or are you more like looking to capture a feeling or a mood uh, i think it's more there? it would be very dependent on the conditions mm. um especially i mean i've visited portobello loads since lock over lockdown mm-hmm. um and you never know, you never know what you're going to get. You know, you, you have numerous weather apps. Um, and my go to weather app would be the Met Office. But, you know, Scottish weather, you know, it, you, you, it's a gamble every single time. So you mm-hmm. never really know what you're going to get. And I think that I love that. I love getting down to the beach and, you know, that element of surprise. And also with a sunrise, it's like one minute, it's like you've got a big band of low cloud. And you're like, right, okay, this is not going to be great, right? Okay, so maybe I'm going for that sort of moodier look. And then all of a sudden the sky lights up um, and you might get five minutes of absolute fantastic colour. Um, for me, it's not always about the colour. It's the softness of the light. And I love the softness of the light hitting the water. And when you see that sheen on the water, um, it, it's just that's that's a beautiful moment to try and capture. So I, I don't going to Portobello and I use Portobello as an example. I never know what I'm going to get. And I think that's part of the fun and what I what what draws me to it. It's really um, quite a skill, I think, to be able to revisit the same place many times and and mm. and make it work. I I find that quite difficult actually. But my 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 approach uh, to photography is usually I'm going to get a specific image, and yeah. I'm not yeah. so well versed in just going to see what I can find. 
So yeah, I always uh, admire if you can go back again and again and keep finding different things. I think that is a different skill. Yeah, but I, I, I agree that like, I'm thinking like up your way, you've got the beautiful rectory head. Um, mm -hmm. I think if you've got, you know, an image, you're going to have, you know, the lighthouse is going to be center point there. Um, and you'll have an image in mind, you'll know what you're wanting to go and get. But in Portobello, you know, you, you've just got you know, and it depends on the tide as well, because mm. when the tide's out at Portobello, it's a huge expanse of sand. Okay. Um, you know, it's the, the extremes are huge in Portobello. When the tide's in, you've got very little beach. So again, you know, it gives you a very different image, but you know, you haven't got any sort of key elements at Portobello. You've literally just got a, a beach and sea, a big, big, big expanse of sea. I love working at the coast and I, one thing I really enjoy about it is how if you're there for a couple of hours, that scene will change a lot. So yeah. like Rattray Hen, like you say, you're there for two hours, you're getting, you're, it's completely different when you leave. When you've got a, a place like that, like Portobello, there's, there's really, there's not a lot there as such. So is, no. is that a good place to start um, trying with the ICM kind of approach? Yeah. Yeah. It, it that it's a good location for that. I, 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 I mean, you'll see by my work, I absolutely love ICM photography. And again, that's, you know, when I have started out with a camera and, you know, when I was learning about a camera, you know, ICM wasn't anything. Well, I didn't even understand what that was. Um, but again, it's very much a style I enjoy. I follow some amazing photographers on Instagram. Um, and obviously, I'm featured in the March edition of the ICM photography magazine mm -hmm. you know which is a, a real honor for me yeah. because it's obviously a field that I'm so interested in um, and now I'm at a stage where you know the experimentation you know is endless with ICM mm -hmm. photography what you can do and the effects that you can get is is really really fascinating and then creating something that's looking more like a art um, which again which is something I really really love is is amazing mm -hmm. and that with you know clever smart editing and the ability of multi exposures and stuff like that it, it's unbelievable what you can create so suddenly portobello becomes you know uh, has endless opportunities mm -hmm. i was i find icm it's really interesting to me it's, it's not something i really do um but i spoke with uh, valda bailey on the show and she's incredible at icm and multiple exposures what she creates i don't yeah. really you can look at it and not know how it's been done. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm fascinated. And I went out with somebody for a tutorial one day and she was really into ICM and she's really good at it. It's oh, it's um, oh. blank canvas. They might uh, be following yeah. you on, on Instagram. So Heidi was doing the ICM and I was like, OK, I, I see what you're doing. But she she was on to something. She knew that, that the one that she created wasn't wasn't the one, but there was something there and she was going to work her way at it. How's that process for you? Because it's a bit mystifying to me. Do you have, do you get a feel for something that you're going to look at? Do you have to work away at the same scene to, to, to find the thing that you have in mind? You, well, you're never ever going to get the same thing um, with ICM. I, I, what I'm looking for, I guess, is the right light and contrast um, to create those sort of those lines that you can get. Um, so it all comes down to the conditions again. Um, and I, I like that softness again in my images. Um, so that sort of soft morning light. Often I quite like the the blue hour light as opposed to um, that golden hour can sometimes be quite harsh and mm -hmm. quite bright. Um, so I like the softness of dawn, really. A lot of your work, I, one of the things I was going to bring up is it's a lot of it is shot in soft light, um, which is I think it works really well with your style. So I didn't mm. know if that was something you seek out soft light or do you, you try and avoid direct sunlight conditions? My preferred, yes, definitely is the blue, the blue hour light. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, harsh light, I find, can is it's just not something I particularly like. Uh, I think it's a personal choice for me. I think certainly in ICM, I prefer the softer, mm. the softer tones. So you would find with a ICM type of shot, would you would you have problems with direct light or harsh light? Yeah, I I, I think so. Yes, because it it would affect. Um, 
I, I like also, you know, daytime photography, if you've got some really sort of dark, moody clouds, again, giving you that contrast, I think it's really, really important with ICM. How long can that take to create an image? I mean, if you go out um, to Portobello of a morning and you're, what are you looking to come back with if you're shooting ICM? Are you looking to get one? Are you Are looking for a few? Yeah, I'd be happy with one really good image mm -hmm. um, and I could come back with hundreds. Um, but, you know, you're always, you don't have a lot of time with sunrise and sunset photography. You know, you, you, you literally, you know, you could have one moment of the right light um, and you'll get, and you'll be lucky enough to get one image from that. Mm -hmm. Or you might come back with nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always the chance to come back with nothing. That's why I don't do it, because I would get really frustrated with myself if I came back with nothing. It is, especially, you know, in the summer months when you get up at, you know, stupid o'clock um, and you come away with nothing. You know, that that is frustrating. It rarely happens, but, uh, you know, I I will definitely follow the weather and I, I don't go out if I think there really is zero chance of anything happening. Mm -hmm. So, but I have been out and, you know, it, it just hasn't sort of resulted in anything. Mm -hmm. But you still have a lovely morning out, you know, yeah. you've still got fresh air and you come back and you, you feel good for it. So I wanted to um, talk about a location that's a, as one of those really special locations that we have here, uh, which is Harris. I know you've, oh. you've been there. Um, what do you think it is about Harris that just makes it so special? It's magical. It's, it's, it's just absolutely beautiful. We were booked to go to Harris, my, myself and my husband, last March. Mm -hmm. um, needless to say, we didn't get mm -hmm. there. Um, we then rebooked, rescheduled the trip to September um, and if you remember, I think the travel ban came back in mid-October. So we only just managed to get there last mm -hmm. year, just okay. before, obviously, everything sort of kicked off again. Um, and both myself and my husband just completely fell in love with the place. Uh, it's, it really is just a magical isle mm -hmm. and every, everything about it. And it's like, how do you put your finger on what it is? But every single beach... Um, I suppose you have got, you know, the mountains dropping directly into the sea, the big white sand, the turquoise seas. I mean, it just is magical. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a real good match for your style anyway, isn't it? I enjoy I enjoyed the trip immensely. We're actually in the process now. Now it's feeling a bit more positive about obviously restrictions lifting soon. And so we're in the process of booking something again for sort of late September. Mm hmm. Um, and getting back over there, which will be something to look forward to um, and something really incredible again. Yeah. So when you go down through Harris, what's what would you say are, are were the favourite spots for you to stop at there? Luskin Tire? Well, Luskin Tire is, is just so, so special. Mm. And again, it's one of those beaches that you're always going to get something different there. You know, the tides... Um, you know, you've got the ferocity of the Atlantic Ocean, you, the beautiful mountains. You know, we were lucky enough to have some incredible light, um, some beautiful sunrises, some beautiful sunsets when we were there. Um, but equally so, a really stormy day there mm -hmm. can be as as magical. I remember standing on the beach uh, and it was that incessant drizzle where you seem to get soaking wet. Um and anywhere else in the world would just be miserable, but it was still just stunning, absolutely beautiful. So I just think it's one of those places it doesn't matter. And it truly lives up to the whole, you know, four seasons in one day. Mm -hmm. The weather is so ever changing there and so quickly. Um, so that in itself, watching the weather in front of you, I think is really quite special as well. So Laskin Tire would be, yeah, de definitely probably the first place I will go back to when I get there later this year. So when you're there, they're in the location now, cameras in hand, what's what's your starting point? What are you looking for to really get your teeth into photographically to get yourself moving? Somewhere like that, I suppose. So when you're on that beach, I mean, you are surrounded by beauty. I'd, I'd make the decision, do I want to be on the beach or do I want to be in the dunes? Mm -hmm. um, the dune network at 
Las Quintana is incredible. So I've never in my life experienced such high dunes and such vast expanse. Mm -hmm. So that in itself can offer up huge amounts of compositions, Mm -hmm. um, very different to if you're actually then just walking along the beach. I think also it would be very dependent for me on the tide, um, whether it's sunset, whether it's sunrise, whether you want the light hitting the mountain behind you or whether you want to sort of, you know, have Terence as, you know, a key focal point for you. I mean, the, the beauty about Las Quintana is the the composition options is endless, mm. which is another reason why I love that beach. Mm-hmm. And then, so does it become a sort of a game of looking for foreground, really? I do, yeah, I mean, I've ha- had a number of shots where I've with Taran say, um, um, and obviously the you know the classic shot of the sort of the the mountains dropping down into the ocean um i've done a couple of dune shots there which you know is always nice to do um i've also played around with quite a bit of icm there as well and one one of my personal favorite shots was the the drizzly morning that i stood in the rain (laughs) Mm -hmm. um and i thoroughly enjoyed that i think my husband was standing behind me thinking oh my god how much longer do i have to stand in this rain but Mm -hmm. it is a beautiful location to do Mm -hmm. um whatever the weather did you manage to go up to Lewis at all or did you just stay down in Harris? We didn't on this trip. I mean, we sailed into Stornoway. So, you know, we, we spent some time in Stornoway both when we came and when we left. Um, and that, it's, a, it's a lovely town. Um, so, no, when we, when we booked to go later this year, we're, we're planning to go for a sort of two-week trip. So we mm. got the time mm. um, to actually explore Lewis a little bit because I want to get up to the butt of Lewis. Mm. I, I, have a, I do have a love for lighthouses. Yeah. Um, so I do want to obviously get up there. But Harris is, you know, surprisingly, Harris and Lewis surprisingly big. Um, uh, we didn't even get all the way around Harris mm-hmm. um, so there's so much to see and so much to explore. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Yeah, two weeks will be the right amount of time, I would say. Yeah, I, mean, I think so. Yeah. I think so. And and enough time to be able to actually relax and mm-hmm. sort of chill out and enjoy a bit of a break as well. Yeah, I went for like two days and it wasn't enough. So, um, yeah. but I actually the mistake I made was I was going for a, a bit of a recce and I just had two days that I could go on it. And so I went yeah. and um, I, but I spent more time in Lewis and less time in Harris, which was was obviously backwards but the other place that i stopped in lewis was dalmore dalmore bay um and that was quite good you, you might like that actually there's not much there there's a sea stack at one end of the beach and and then there's just the atlantic over to i don't know canada or something i suppose i, I felt a bit daft really for not spending more time in harris because i was dashing down the road like from one beach to the next and then i had to get back uh-huh. to the ferry later so so yeah it's a, it's a great spot to be and what I was thinking about in terms of locations, just while we're on locations, um, a lot of your work is not in the hot spots, like we said earlier. You've mm. got obviously you've got Harris, but it's not like it's um, Glencoe, Dusky, and and all those places. So I really appreciated that you've got some different locations on there. Um, yeah. Are there, what are your other sort of locations that stand out to you as not not the big ones that everybody knows, but are, are maybe a really good sort of top secret, but a really good location in Scotland. <laughs> well, I I did. I, I mean, when I started photography, it was all about the photography hotspots, mm-hmm. um, you know, and you see so much of, you know, the hotspots on Instagram. And it's amazing to visit these places. But then you kind of, well, for me, I want to do more unknown shots, as you say. Um, one of my favourite parts of Scotland is East Lothian. Mm-hmm. Um you know east lovian has the most beautiful beautiful coastline in fact and whilst it's only you know technically down the road from me it's i haven't been there since i think the last time i went to east lovian was october last year mm. so it, it's been really i've really missed those beaches um and you know there's so many islands in the firth of forth you know that provide really great photography opportunities um you know, it, it's just an absolute beautiful coastline from St. Ab's Head, mm-hmm. um, which is technically sort of in the Scottish borders. But the coastline there, you've got the dramatic cliffs, so a little bit more like probably Stonehaven and further mm-hmm. up the northeast coast. But you've got that really dramatic um, head there. And then you've got obviously Bass Rock, which is obviously iconic. You've got Fidger Island, you've got numerous lighthouses. Um, so I absolutely love East Lothian. Um, 
And then I suppose the other place for me, which, you know, is very well known, and again, some great photographers from Fife, but would be the East Nook of Fife. Mm. And I think for me, I, I grew up in the southeast of England in the home counties and mm. holidayed in Cornwall every year. And uh, the East Nook of Fife just brings back those memories of the Cornish fishing villages. So really, really quaint. And again, just so different. And I think that's what's so amazing about Scotland is the diversity you know, of what you've got on the East Coast mm. versus what you've got on the West Coast. Uh, and then obviously you've got obviously the, the magical highlands and the magic of Glencoe. I mean, it, it just is, you know, something for absolutely everybody. Mm -hmm. Do you think um, for you being, um, you know, born down south, as you've said, coming up here, do you think that it allows you to look at things with a, a fresh perspective all the time? Do you, do you still, even though you've been here for a while, you still feel that freshness of, of seeing yeah I yeah I do I I lived in Northern Ireland for a, a few years mm -hmm. with my, my with my job and I moved over here in 2010 um my dad's from the Scottish borders so he, he's lived back there my parents have lived back up here for 20 years um so you know Scotland's always been very okay. much part of part of my life you know we've been coming up here from when I was pretty much a baby um but yeah, I mean, I moved here in 2010. I moved to Edinburgh and I, I love Edinburgh. I can't, I will never leave Scotland. Um, ultimately, the dream for myself and my husband is to move to the, the Outer Hebrides mm. um, and just live a slower pace of life. Mm, yeah. You know, that that's the, the sort of 10 year dream. Um, and hopefully we can make that a reality. Yeah, well, that would be the place, I think, for a slow pace of life. I was talking to someone who lived in Sky. And no. I was like, oh, fantastic. Because the first time I went to Sky, I was like, oh, that's it. We're moving. It's amazing. Yeah. And I came <laughs> back and um, my wife was, is not into the idea the, the same way as I am. So anyway, any time <laughs> I was talking to someone about Sky, I was like, oh, fantastic. And they were like, no, nine months of rain. It's not fantastic. It's not as ever, it's not uh -huh. everything you think it's going to be. No. But, um, there's always downsides again. But I'd noticed on your um, bio that you'd said that you love getting out in the rain. And we've kind of touched on it as well. This will be a shock revelation for some photographers that the camera actually works <laughs> in the rain. So um, so how, how about we touch on that for a second? When you're out in the rain, the main thing for me is keeping the lens dry. I don't have any worries about my camera body getting wet um but yeah. when you get rain on the lens it's that can be a nightmare because as soon as you yeah. wipe it it goes everywhere so let's have some from a rain photography expert let's have some top tips for <laughs> shooting in the rain i don't think i don't know about that um yeah no I, the reason i like going out in the rain is again it comes back to that sort of you know dark cloud and that contrast that lends itself so well to um ICM really mm -hmm. um, and dramatic photography which is nice and often you know when you especially in Scotland when you have heavy rain and you get that break and that light comes through mm -hmm. that's that's when something special can happen mm -hmm. um, when it rains really hard <laughs> and you get those really big droplets on your lens that's that you, ju you just can't can you yeah. and but when it's that sort of I call it mizzle Mm -hmm. miserable drizzle mizzle when it's light mizzle which does soak you but it, it doesn't impact the lens quite as much um you can kind of manage um but yeah no it's, it would be stop and start wouldn't it and mm -hmm. yeah and it's sometimes it can be pretty miserable but you gotta try yeah yeah I don't mind it actually I don't um enjoy the cold or the rain but when I'm at work like that I, it's kind of a battle and I you can get into it mm -hmm. and I'm, now it makes me want to come away with something even more um, so uh, on your website um, which is mybeautifulscotland.com you have for sale some uh, prints and whatnot so uh, I was wondering how's that side of things going because your work lends itself so well to that kind of uh, printed image uh, because it, like yeah. you touched on it earlier it's quite in, it's quite like artwork it's like almost painterly yeah. isn't it yeah it's, it's it's been it's been really successful um and ironically my business really took off as this time last year when lockdown sort of started mm -hmm. um and became really busy I think as people suddenly had time to shop online um, but I also had time to sort of you know work on the website you know the SEO all, all of the the hard work behind a, a website and mm -hmm. when you use platforms like Etsy you know it's it, you know you're, you're on a massive platform 
you have huge amounts of competition, it's really, really hard to get your work seen. Mm. Um, so a lot of work goes into, you know, having the best SEO that you can possibly have to, to be able to get seen in the first place. And then once that starts happening and your audience grows, um, yeah, it, it's, it's been good. And, you know, I've been furloughed this time last year. I've been furloughed now um, has allowed me more time to sort of, you know, put into my business. So ultimately, I think that we have seen some successes from that. Mm. Um, I do obviously a range of photography, prints, cards, uh, magnets. I, I do a little bit of wholesale and um, not quite so much as I did a couple of years ago. Um, the wholesale works quite hard work. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm really pleased. With it. And, and it's just a really nice part time sort of business for me alongside obviously my part time day job. So I'm really happy with how it's worked out. Yeah. So where do you find the orders are coming from? Is it up here or is it abroad some sometimes there's been a, I, I do have an awful big awfully big customer base in america mm, yeah. um, who and you know the americans absolutely adore scotland and you you often get you know customers from america you know or i visited there and i i, I want a memory and mm. Uh, yeah, I get an awful lot of personalization requests, uh, personalized messages. With, so there's, there's an awful lot of gifts being bought. Okay. Um, the design side of me, you know, I, I also sort of do quite a bit of typography work and personalization, custom work. So um, it all sort of, sort of fits together, really. Yeah, yeah. But that back end work that you described on the website, that's not the fun part of photography, is it? <laughs> it's it's not. And, and the amount of administration that comes into it as well and you know keeping your accounts up to date and everything like that you know it it yeah that that isn't the fun side of it and it's keeping things fresh as well and new content has obviously been more challenging mm -hmm. um obviously since all the travel restrictions um so yeah there's, there's been challenges but having the time um has definitely helped yeah, let's talk about your camera gear. What's your go-to sort of camera lens combination? My two favourite lenses would be my wide-angle lens, which is 10 to 20, Nikon. Um, fantastic for seascapes. Really, really good for, you know, that, mm. that wide expanse. Um, ICM works really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, so I do enjoy that. Um, and then I've got a 35 millimeter prime, mm -hmm. which is also really, really great lens um, for ICM as well, to mm -hmm. be honest. Um, and then I do have a 18 to 200 millimeter um, for when I'm feeling lazy mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or if I don't want to carry much with me, yeah. um, which is often the case, you know, when, you know, gear can be really, really heavy. So it depends where I'm going, how far from the car am I going? Mm -hmm. um, but that is my lazy lens. Yeah. Well, that's a great choice, though. I always recommend people, if they don't want to have to be carrying stuff or changing stuff, that 18 to 200 range, mm. it's perfect for a lot of people, yeah. isn't it? And so, well, it's interesting that you said it, that it's a wide lens, because I, when I look at the work, it doesn't have that wide, wide angle feel, you know, where the elements are scooping in at the bottom and the sky is flying up over the top. So do you, are you working it often at the widest end, or do you have a sort of favourite spot that it ends up at? I'm probably working around sort of the, the 20 millimeter, 20 to 35 really is yeah. where the, the focal lengths that I'm working with. Yeah. Do you use filters at all in your work or do you need to use a six stopper for the ICM? I do. I, I kind of, I find because of the light that I'm using that they're, they're quite essential. Mm -hmm. So that my go-to would be my graduated, it's a 0 0.9 graduated, uh, soft graduated filter mm -hmm. um, is my sort of go-to filter. Um, I'll often use a polarizer as well um, in the mornings just to enhance that, mm -hmm. that color. And then again, depending if, if I'm shooting in the day, ICM needs that slow shutter speed. So I've got a little stopper um six stop yeah. that I would use as well uh, I used to use when I did a bit more sort of really long exposures I, I have got the big big stopper in my kit as well mm -hmm. and I don't use that as much anymore so yeah the six stop from what I, I knew about ICM it seems to be 
it's a common uh, filter that I oh, see. It's a great Twitter's filter. Yeah. It's a great filter. I love to use the six stop. I'm like maybe like yourself. I use it more and often nowadays than I use the ten stop because mm. when you're on that seascape kind of thing, you can get a couple of seconds. It's just the right yeah. place to be a lot of the time. With regards to processing, um, I think you're, it's so easy to over process. I think, but your yes. your your work seems just to have the nice lightest touch to it. Is that something you're, you're conscious of or what are you doing processing Yes, wise? I think, I, I mean, I use Photoshop um, and I've, I've just, I've been, just been given Photo Affinity and I haven't tried it yet. Um, so I'm quite ex- excited to try that software. But yeah, no, I, I use Photoshop and I absolutely love editing. Mm-hmm. I find it so calming and I, I, the whole process for me, I really, really enjoy it. And uh, usually when I'm back from a shoot, time prevails usually when I'm back from a shoot the first thing I do is um sit and look through my images and edit ones that and I like to do it straight away and it, it just that whole process is just thoroughly enjoyable for me um and I think it's really really important and I mean you know when I look back at some of my my shots from a few years ago I you know every every photographer I'm sure has their cringe moments mm. when they look at old shots I love also re-editing older shots and then having a look at the, you know the original edit versus what you can do now mm-hmm. um, so I've spent an awful lot of time um, look, doing fo- photoshop uh, tutorials online uh, YouTube's amazing for that um, and I've, I've just spent so much time understanding what it can do and I just think it's the most incredible thing mm. what you can do is amazing yeah it's just such an amazing resource YouTube and people you're starting photography quite recently the resource that you have available is phenomenal yeah you just didn't have yeah. that a few years ago even you know 10 years ago yeah and in terms of camera craft particularly with the ICM is there um are you using the camera in manual mode or will you kind of pick a shutter speed and, and work it that way how do you go about that I, I I always shoot manually um that was something you know that was quite when I first got my camera it was quite daunting moving from you know your auto modes yeah shutter modes to full manual mm-hmm. um but it's one of those things now that you don't give a second thought to you know often for me I'm led by what shutter speed I want to use especially with ICM Um, and a lot of my ICM shots are quite slow Um, ranging you know again depending on what light and how slow I can do it and what filters I'm using but I like to have about a two second ICM shot and I know a lot of ICM photographers are quicker than that uh, I like the slowness of what you can then create. So two seconds is a good mm-hmm. um, speed for me. Mm-hmm. So then I'm led by that. So you that would tend to be your your first setting to go with is the two seconds. Yes. Then you'll find where you're going yes. from there. Okay, I get that. Um, okay, and any other equipment that comes with you that, that might be handy or unexpected? Well, not so much unexpected, but um, I had my first tripod was a travel tripod because again I was very focused on weight Mm -hmm. um and it was it was very lightweight Mm -hmm. and uh was great for when we would climb up mountains and you know keep my weight limits down Mm -hmm. and it was when I went up and again let Ben Le Creuse is that how you pronounce (laughs) it no I don't know (laughs) um and I went up with my travel tripod and it was blowing a gale mm. uh, and I couldn't get the shot I wanted because my tripod was being blown all over the place. Okay. And I realized, right, okay, I need to upgrade my tripod. Mm. Uh, and I got a Vanguard um, and it's absolutely fantastic. A lot heavier, mm-hmm. but absolutely fantastic. Uh, and it was worth the investment for me. So I do an awful lot of ICM on the tripod. Okay. And again, I know an awful lot of ICM photographers who don't and handheld is you know, probably what ICM is all about. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it depends what you're trying to create. And if you, sometimes for me, I love that clean line mm-hmm. that ICM gives you and you can only get that when you pan on a tripod. So I do do use a tripod most of the time. This takes us to a round which I call double exposure. And uh, I'll ask you about a particular photograph and you can tell me about a favourite shot uh, of yours as well or just a a memorable or amazing moment. So the shot I wanted to ask you about was from your Instagram feed. It's Isle of Harris. I believe it's Luskin Tower and it went up on the 27th of November. 
Um, I don't know if that means anything to you, but it looks, I don't know if it's a double exposure or if it's a movement, but it's, yeah, it's definitely Alaskan tire and it's got the the mountains in the distance. I mean, there's a few other ones that, that I really gravitated to, but I thought that one really encapsulates your style. What, can you remember that particular shot? Oh, I remember that. That that was first thing in the morning. Oh, that was a beautiful morning. Uh, and for me, when I look at that image, it sums up what Luskin Tower is all about. You've got that beautiful light hitting the white sand, um, reflecting. This particular shot is a multi-exposure. Mm-hmm. I, I really wanted to enhance, I suppose, the mountains. Mm-hmm. Um because, you know, that, that backdrop of the, the North Harris Mountains is just, uh, you know, iconic, I suppose. Uh, yeah. A lot of photographers go specifically for that. Um, so, yeah, that, that was the double exposure and creating that, that almost sort of, you know, magical feel with the mountains. Um, so, yeah, that, that was a beautiful morning. Yeah, there's a sort of a dreamy kind of quality to it. Um, yeah. It's definitely an abstraction, isn't it? So do you remember how long you worked away at that one for? Um, often, sometimes we're like I came back from Harris with hundreds, mm-hmm. as you would imagine, hundreds and hundreds of photographs, and there's always ones that stand out immediately that mm-hmm. you get to work on. That one um, was one that where I upload. Do you say that I uploaded that on the 27th of November? Yeah, yeah. And I was back, <laughs> and I was back from Harris at the beginning of October. So that was one that I obviously went back and revisited and kind of didn't necessarily stand out to me immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had to sort of, you know, the vision of sort of adding some multiple exposures to that. And it kind of came together. And I enjoyed that whole process, that whole process of sort of creating that, you know, it had the right light and the reflections on the sand to begin with. So yeah, beautiful morning. I think there was a bit of mizzle, as I put it, yeah. um, <laughs> that morning as well. Yeah, it's such a fun and rewarding when you find one, because the ones that you, at the time, you'll have your favourites in the moment, but then you'll find one sometime later that you didn't see. Yeah. It's so rewarding. I love that. Oh, I love going back and revisiting. Mm. And it's the memories as well. You know, that's the other beauty about photography is, you know, you've created these memories of special moments. And yeah, there's nothing better. Mm. So is there a favorite shot or just a memorable, amazing moment from your photography journey or just a fun anecdote? Oh, uh, I, th- I think two prongs. Um, most memorable at the moment would be, you know, Harris and walking onto Luskentire Beach for the very first time, mm-hmm. having seen numerous photographs of Luskentire Beach, I mean, hundreds, um, that nothing prepares you for the moment when you walk on and you actually see it yourself. Um, and to capture that is really, really difficult because it just is such an immense place. So that's very, very memorable. And the images I've sort of taken away from that, you know, some some of those are my very very much my favorite but it's because of the memory that comes goes with them and then also then on the other hand for me is being in lockdown now for almost a year Mm -hmm. um and staying local and falling madly in love with portobello beach Mm -hmm. and and portobello beach is so different during the day and as you can imagine gets very very busy last summer when we had some great weather I mean it was absolutely heaving as you can imagine Um, but when you go there for a sunrise especially a summer sunrise and you literally are the only person on the beach Um, and when the tide's out and it's just a mass expanse of sand it's a, a really really beautiful place to be. Um, okay, that brings us to the quick fire round, which I call motor drive. And so uh, I've got 10 quick questions. So we're looking for quick answers. Okay. All right. So um, wide angle or telephoto? Wide. Coffee or tea? Tea. Well, you've answered this next one already, but sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Head or heart? Heart. Uh, what was the last great book, movie or album you experienced? I'm gonna say Tenet yeah is it good very good one of those is a movie that you need to watch more than once okay and also can I just add in there the Queen's Gambit the best series I've watched okay yeah someone else had said that as well cool okay this is the really the the big question Uh, would you use an expensive lens cloth or just the corner of your shirt I've never used the corner of my shirt but I would if I had to okay and I lose lens cloths all the time yeah they're (laughs) strewn everywhere (laughs) <laughs> yeah. um, 
I've always got one in just about every pocket, but I always still use Yeah, totally. They're so, everywhere, uh, <laughs> all over the house. <laughs> yeah. What's a weird thing I could find in your camera bag? Hand warmers. Probably not weird, but I suffer from very, very cold hands, which like, I have Reynolds syndrome. Um, and when it, when my fingers, I've, I've got poor circulation, so my fingers get really numb. Mm. So much so that I can't press the shutter button really right um so i go every i have hand warmers everywhere in every pocket in my bag and they really work i just literally hold them Uh uh-huh or you just put them inside your gloves or i actually hold just hold them in my hand so i have them in my pocket so every time i so so that they get the warmth gets to my fingers Mm -hmm. i think i might get those my hands get really cold and i don't it's just the last couple of years i've really noticed the cold a lot more than i used to um anyway um, okay, do you have a favorite photographer right now or just generally of all time? Um, if I was going to sound cliche again, um, uh, Colin Pryor, I think, has an amazing portfolio of amazing mountain yeah. landscapes. Um, and on Instagram at the moment, seascape photographer Rachel Talbot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, she's up there. She's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and Jennifer burnout i think it burnout, is. I th- um, yeah i think i know yeah, yeah. she her, her photography is absolutely yeah, i mean they, they, they are women i sort of aspire to so yeah i really admire um rachel tyler bart's work fantastic uh, phenomenal amazing yeah. yeah and the last one when do you feel at peace with the universe it would be when you're watching a sunrise unfold great answer okay Uh, Thanks, Shona, so much. I really appreciate your time today. You were fantastic. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thanks for listening. Follow Shona on Instagram at MyBeautifulScotland and check out her online shop at MyBeautifulScotland.com. Links and links to everything else we spoke about are in the show notes. Uh, If you enjoyed this episode, you might enjoy my conversation with Valda Bailey from Season 1 and with Donna Krause from Season 1. I'll be back next week with a very special guest on the Season 2 finale. Until then, be kind Enjoy your photography and I'll see you out there.